All right, we are back and live. Uh, don't know what was up with that technical difficulty. Um, everything is, is working now. I can confirm. I can see the audio waves going forth. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're back. We took a three week break. Um, I personally had some burnout issues went out, but we are back. And I'm uh, lot... Disneyland. <laughs> yes. A, a lot has happened. There have been there has been a Disney trip. There has been uh, another trip of some variety that I will not disclose. <laughs> um yeah, it's it's gonna be a duo dual cast. I I don't know the terminology. So you've you've got your captain here, you've got your what what's co-captain, lieutenant, no. major, general, commander, shepherd, uh, Sarah over here. I'm Commander Shepard. This is my favorite podcast on the Citadel. <laughs> I'm going to say that for every podcast I'm on so I can get that discount. I'm there sorry. You go. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I mean, I, like, hey, I love everyone on this show. I, I, I would like to say I love everyone on this show equally, but there's some people... I love more equally. I, I I I have not done a tally of the of of each instance that everyone's been on the show, but so out of like the thirty five, you you look you've like by far been the most uh, frequent frequent person on. I guess aside for if, if I wasn't on the show, like the, it would not be live. I'd I'd have to like hand off the streaming key or or whatever. Like I try, I do, I, I, I do my best. Obviously, I have my like burnout days too, but I do, I do my absolute best. We we appreciate you. I appreciate you. The, the world at large. Uh, the, I, the, mean, I know that's a lie, but it's okay. <laughs> the the uh, cam the camera the stream is seeing can't see it, but my well, my big boy cat over there appreciates you. Thanks. <laughs> But, um, oh yeah, I forgot to do the rigmarole, because I've not done this in like three weeks, but that's okay. Uh, Game Session Podcast is filmed here live on Mondays at 5 p.m. PST. Uh, used to be Sundays. Uh, you can find it later on podcast services and on YouTube as full episodes and individually cut up segments. I want to give a shout out to my patrons, uh, Ramen Nomad, uh, Bo, and Force Big Boss. Thank you very much. Um, I guess just just slightly talk about burnout stuff and just scheduling uh podcast is still going to be back i might be taking another day or two after the podcast airs to actually put the stuff up because i had myself on this like a super strict production schedule where i would like record the podcast and do all the post-production like immediately afterwards hurry to bed so i can get up to work at three in the morning it, it, it sucked it sucked really bad so i'm just going to be a little bit more relaxed about the way i approach things um Game streams will be coming back basically when I feel like it. I, I don't feel like doing a regimented schedule for that. It'll basically be like, hey, I just feel like streaming something today. I'm, I'll post to Twitter and then we'll do it. But that's about that. Uh, do you, do you want to advertise anything you've been up to, Sarah? I mean, uh, not really. I was just... Uh, I was just... Uh, I just taped a show with the uh, video game robot guys they were absolutely lovely i had a great time uh that should be going live sometime next week uh i'm still doing my freelance work but i am working on a evangelion piece right now that's taking a lot more out of me than i thought it would just like the show did <laughs> but I, I am trying to get that done so it can be edited and hopefully released by next week so hopefully <laughs> didn't you have a um a Suicide Squad piece that went up in the last I did. couple weeks? Uh, that was right before the movie came out. It actually came out, like, I think one of the days I was in Disneyland, it, it came out. Um, I That was just, like, a comprehensive, I hadn't seen the movie at the time, like, discussion of every character, like, where they first appeared in, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I'm i kind of iffy on it now, because I had theories that ended up totally not coming true. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna like directly link it to people, but I I mean yeah, I just did that. That was a lot of fun. That was a crazy lot of work and research. What did you think of the movie overall? I liked it. I had a lot of fun. Um Gunn is an extremely talented person when he when he's given the chance to do what he wants to do, and I feel like DC really gave him the chance to do what he wants to do. 
I mean, I mean, Marvel did the same with, uh, especially Guardians. I feel like Guardians was all him, and Marvel was just like, hey, this is what we want it to be. It has to fit in the MCU, that kind of stuff. You can do whatever you want. Uh, and I feel like Suicide Squad was that times two. Like he was just like with the, with the amount of D list characters that he used in that <laughs> movie to an extent that made them honestly interesting is an incredible feat. And he's a I always think that Gunn is a talented writer, and he's definitely one of those genre writers that never loses sight of what brought him there. So there's a lot of which I was surprised about horror elements in. Suicide Squad that I'm just like, oh, well, this dude did work for Trauma for, like, a decade. And he did do stuff like Slither. And he did do a bunch of different horror projects. And you could tell that that background is in his new... Like, in Suicide Squad. So that was really cool. Plus, mm-hmm. I liked that it came out on HBO Max. I was able to just, like, lay in bed with a thing of popcorn and just, like, watch it on my TV. Like, I miss going to movie theaters. And, like, I've done it, like, a few times since, like, whenever they've open back up quote unquote whatever but um movie theater popcorn has not been the same like it does not taste as good yeah um, at, at least the area I, i've been back to like I, like for the longest time during this whole pandemic i mean i've been like fuck going to going to movie theaters has been like the cornerstone of like what i do like on a weekly basis for like basically my entire life and not being able to go there not having the popcorn it fucking bummed me out and then i go back I, i'm trying to remember what the first movie i saw was was it quiet place 2 or I don't remember, and but you're only showing that and Black Widow at a lot of theaters for a while. Yeah, but but yeah, I I, w- I went back and just, yeah, the movie theater popcorn's not as good as it used to be. It's kind of it tastes kind of more on the kettley side than butter, even though I request like extra but I I don't know I don't know what's going on. It's I hate, hate to go off on a tangent, but I can agree with that statement. I'm not gonna out myself in where I work, but I work below a movie theater, and. I went up during one of my lunch breaks. Instead of getting an actual lunch, I got like a large thing of pop uh, of a pop uh, popcorn. So I hadn't had movie theater popcorn in like ages, and it just didn't taste good. <laughs> I don't know, like, it got like a shit batch, but I was like legitimately disappointed. Like I was like, I was like, I haven't had movie theater popcorn in like a year, and I finally get it, and it tastes awful. And I will say, I do have my first m- m- um, movie tickets. In like a di- in like a year, because I'm seeing Shane Sh- Shane Chi Thursday night. Um, because I kind of figured fucking Marvel's not going to show this shit on Disney Plus anymore. So I guess all I have to do is actually go like and actually see a movie. Um, so I will be going back. And I mean, I don't know, I'll judge the popcorn then, but at the time when I got it, it wasn't good. <laughs> It took me a really long time to to come to terms with it because like the first time I had him, just like oh maybe it's just happens to be a bad batch, and like the second time, the third time, I'm just like okay no there, there's an issue, and I don't want to admit that there's an issue, but yeah it's it's fucked up. Uh, talking about uh, <laughs> Suicide Squad, uh, I'll, I'll basically echo everything you've said. Uh, James Gunn has a sick twisted sense of humor that absolutely clicks with me. Like the. Me like you, you, you can watch the movie without knowing it's James Gunn and just be like, "This is a James Gunn ass movie." Um, without spoilers, um, hmm, how do I want to say this? The the prominent character in and basically these DC movies now. Um, I'll I'll just say it, Harley Quinn, fucking great. Love love. Uh, uh, how do you, how do you say her first name? Margot Margot yeah. Margot Mar- Robbie. Mar- yeah, she's amazing. Love everything that she did in the film. Um, she's not necessarily the main A plot. And so in a weird way, it I, I don't want to say tacked on because it's great. Every, everything she does is great. They make her but, the B plot. Yeah. And I mean, that could just be because Gunn has a habit of doing B plots in his films, but he does them very good. Like even with all the Harley stuff. And they recreated one of my favorite scenes from the comic that I was very happy <laughs> about. Um, I'm not going to spoil it, but I'll tell it to you after. Um, he he always has this thing of doing B-plots in his movies. I'm pretty sure, sure Slither had one. I think it revolved um, Michael Rooker's char- character. If I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've seen that. Um, but Gunn has this way of doing B-plots in a way where it doesn't take away from the main story. Mm -hmm. And I will definitely say that Gunn did did some things in this that made me multiple times out loud just go like, ah, (laughs) like, (laughs) 
multiple times audibly. I was like, come on. I mean, I'm cool with that. It's great. Wasn't expecting it, but ah. Uh. <laughs> like, man, I, I, I just I just had such a fucking good time with it. And um, we, we don't have to put it on blast, whatever. There's, there's been, as usual, the Marvel discourse. I'm just like, you and me, we, we went to film school. We, we watched a lot of like we, we studied everything. We watched a lot of pretentious films. And I'm just like, hey, I'm I just like Marvel movies, okay? It's just like I, I like I, I don't even want to call them dumb. I I don't think they're dumb. I I, I, I yeah. like action movies. I like cheesy B horror movies. I, I, I there's there's, a, there's like this whole veneer of like fucking like what is like actual cinema versus these popcorn I like I don't give a fuck, dude. It I like it. I it's yeah. I will argue this shit till the end of the time that uh, Captain America Winter Soldier is one of the best spy films of the last decade. Oh, absolutely, fucking Hell yeah, a dude. fucking Marvel movie? Like, it's... And I don't want to get on this discourse, because I shouldn't have gotten it. I shouldn't have gotten on it on the first place, but I had to, because how... I'm, I'm not even going to get, get get into it, but calling... And just calling children who enjoy the MCU pernicious and dangerous is just fucking absurd. Like, they're literal children. If they're not hurting anybody, let them enjoy what they want to enjoy. I got into comics as a teenager because of the MCU, and I'm 25, and I still fucking love the MCU. Like, three-fourths of my time in California in, in, in Adventure to my dad's an annoyance was spent in Avengers Campus. Mm -hmm. Like, meeting all the Avengers. And I'm 25, but I still enjoyed that <laughs> shit. Like, I, I it's... It's just it's it's dumb. It's crazy. It's a stupid ass dis discourse. Any film is a film. If your movie is being shown in a theater and it's shot like it's like if it walks like a duck, if it quacks like a duck, it's a duck. If if it's shot in on on a camera and it's shown in a theater, or it's a or you call it a oh excuse me, if you call it a film, it's a film. Like you don't understand why people why this discourse still like still exists. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, um, just just even thinking about it. Just like, oh god, I like some people really make their whole fucking personality just like, oh, I just like fundamentally opposed to like superhero movies. I'm like, I don't know, dude. You, you're like, you're you're missing out on some good shit. Like, I I think there's certain Marvel movies that are more um, run of the mill than others, for for, for lack of better words. Mm -hmm. But th there's some fucking gold in there, and you're like, you you are missing out like so bad if you're not watching shit. It's uh, and that's as yeah. much discourse as we're gonna talk about on this show today. Hey, <laughs> like I am done with the discourse. I'm exhausted. I'm tired. Let people enjoy. There's, Let people enjoy shit. Like there, God, there has been a lot of discourse at the last. <laughs> Too many. The, con con conveniently, in the time that we have been off the air, there's been a lot of and discourse. And I'm exhausted by it. I mean, like, I like fighting the good fight when it comes to speaking out against like bigotry or, or like shitheads whatever and like i don't like e even if it's stuff i fundamentally agree with there's times i'm just like i just don't care in the aspect i do not want to see it i don't want to engage with it i already get shit in my daily life like sometimes i just want to chill i want to vibe it's it's exhausting it is absolutely fucking exhausting it's uh yeah that's all I'll say about the dis about discourse in general. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's talk. Finally, talk about games. Yes, yeah, so let, let, let's talk about games. The things that a uh, a video games podcast is typically known for um, that and talking about James Gunn. I'll, I'll use any excuse to talk about James. Uh, Gunn, I mean, kind of excuse. He did confirm this this week that that a specific scene in Suicide Squad was based off his work on Lollipop Chainsaw, which kind of rolled. And he and he actually name dropped the 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 like game too. He was like, "Oh yeah, I worked on this game a couple of years ago," and I totally based this one fight scene off of that game. You know, I think I own it on PS3. I just never actually got around to playing it. It's nope. if you can get past a lot of the problematic shit in it, it's dumbly fun. Like it's totally a gun project as much as it is a pseudo fifty one project. And I had a lot of fun with it, and it was very cute because uh, Suda 
added Gunn on Twitter being like, oh my god, thank you, and Gunn totally responded back to it, and I thought that was the best thing. And he also thanked uh, Gail Simone in the movie's credits, and she's one of the best Suicide Squad writers like out there. And that was nice. just really cool. The one thing I will say about Gunn is that he at least gives credit where credit is due. And that was very cool to see him be like, well, of course I was going to thank you in the credits of this. Like, just like, <laughs> of course I was going to do it. Like, it just it just felt really good to know that Gunn is definitely one, one of those directors that knows who, where he gets his stuff from and very graciously thanks those who helped make it so. Nice. That, that was uh, We have some 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 uh fucking cj we have cj in the chat saying jose have you ever played this hit indie game called halo is it, uh, is it the guy who was in fortnite who's very graciously getting his own his own game yeah it, it's weird uh i i don't uh, there's like some person called master chief where he plays this guy called halo and there's Isn't like master this, chef yeah he he cooks uh he cooks the enemies it's like cooking mama except with uh aliens um, Isn't that just trauma center? And Kenny says, "Don't you know he hates Halo?" Spe- I do not hate. I, 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 I can't. I can't pull up a facade. Halo Five is fucking good. His name is Mister <laughs> Halo. <laughs> um, let, let's talk about what we've been playing. We're not really going to cover too much news this week. Um, I don't know. I, I just feel like vibing. There'll be news next week. I have notes and stories typed I up. I just don't notes. feel like it. Oh, that's it's fine. All coming from up here. See, I I remember for one job interview I did, which I actually wound up declining because I didn't want to give uh, the the pay rate I was asking for because it wouldn't make sense transitioning from where I was before. Um, I like to think of it as I, f- I forget what the prompt was, but I I said, uh, being a manager is basically just all about professional improvisation. So you know that's what we're gonna do right here. Just improvise off the cuff. It's it's gonna be beautiful. Um, I would like to talk about Back for Blood. Um, no, I have not played it. <laughs> You've not played it. I mean, um, it's it's just better Left for Dead, and I played it off Left for Dead in college or in like junior college, where I'm like, I know what this is gonna be. So be yeah. <laughs> how how do you just generally feel about Left for Dead? It's fun in co-op. You play that shit by yourself, and you're not gonna have a fun time. So. Um, just, just some quick background. Uh, Back for Blood. It's a four-player survival. I was going to say it's not survival. It's a survival action game. You can play with uh, three other friends online. There's a versus mode where you can do PvP against other people controlling special infected. Um, it's just a spiritual. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a spiritual successor to Left for Dead. It's the same. Uh, I believe it's the same core developers because Turtle Rock was making Left for Dead, and then I, I forget if they pitched it to. Not pitch, but they showed it to to uh, Valve, and Valve bought them out, or bought bought the IP. So it, it I don't know. I look it up. It, it's all on the internet. It's available. Um, okay. Yeah, spiritual successor. Um, before I go into individual points, it yeah, it's basically Left for Dead. Um, I I feel it's very hard for me personally to disassociate my <laughs> feelings uh, for Left for Dead One and Two from this because. Left 4 Dead 2 came out in what, 2009, I believe? Even want to so, think about so I, I have played a ridiculous amount of Left 4 Dead 2 in, uh, because what, what's that? that? That's 12 years. 12 years it's been out. So I, I have 12 years of memories and love and nostalgia specifically for Left 4 Dead 2, uh, let, let alone the first game. Thanks so for aging me, friend. We old. I, I mean, fourteen when Left 4 Dead Two came out. Jesus Christ! Not a baby anymore. We're we're old men. We're old ladies. It's oh, we're gonna, my we back st- hurts. We we started life in diapers. We're about to have to wear them again. Oh no! <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's hard for me to disassociate. Like I'm always gonna like unconsciously compare it, and uh, developers kind of it, it's a spiritual successor. Like like they're very obviously echoing it. Like they're very well aware. Um, gameplay wise, it's I I mix like like the core shooting feels good. Um, if you're using a controller, like they added ADS, which the only guns that could do it in Left 4 Dead previously it was it was uh, snipers. But so there, there's a big emphasis if you're like on a controller, like you need to be like snap targeting stuff. So just like 
uh, fundamentally, it, it plays a lot different. I guess if, if you're playing on mouse, you can just uh, blind, not blind, hip fire, and it generally works out pretty well. But like, like, like there, there's equivalents for the special infected to uh, Left 4 Dead. Like, like in Left 4 Dead 2, there was the hunter, the spit. I'm sorry, the, the hunter, the um, I almost said the liquor, the uh, the smoker, uh, the boomer. They had the witch, the tank, the spitter, the charger, and the jockey. So there's there was, there was a bunch of different kinds of special infected here in Back for Blood. There's three core special infected, and they each have like their own different um, specializations, if that makes any sense. But they're using like the same base model. So like there's a um, like like the the big dudes like they can either explode and they'll have like a big old vulnerable spot in their chest, or if they're like the uh, acid variant of it, they have the the weak spot like in their throats. So so there, there's a focus like on attacking weak points. But it, the lack of variety is kind of felt when it, it's not a whole bunch of like different, distinctly looking infected. Um, yeah, it sounds like they just kind of reuse the same model, but then like edited stuff on it. Basically, like, oh, this is the spitter infected. This is the ones with the giant arms. Like, mm -hmm. which I mean, is Turtle Rock technically an indie studio? Like, they're not getting Valve money for this. I. Don't know to be honest. I'd have to look that up, but like, like, yeah, like from gameplay and then even just like aesthetics, it's kind of that part is kind of a bummer for me because you like uh, you can tell from like a sound, you can tell from just like a quick little visual glance and like Left 4 Dead, just like oh, that is a distinctly looking thing. I know exactly what that thing can do versus like I have to guess what variant it is. Like the um, the hunter slash spitter equivalent in here the uh i forget what they're called stingers i think and then there's like two other varieties that they could be like the entire point of that uh that class of special infect is that they stay far away so unless you have a sniper you don't know what kind of variant it is it's mm -hmm. I'm, I'm generally not a fan and then and then the other thing that um i don't want to say a noise um and, and left for dead too unless it was a tank or a witch you could kill the special infected by yourself like incredibly quickly if, if you were just staying on your toes. Uh, whereas here, like if, if, you're, if you're fighting a, a special infected by yourself, like especially the big arm dude, I forget the name. I think it's tall boy. Um, if you're fighting by yourself, like you cannot take it down by yourself without like emptying three clips in it. So you, you're shooting at it. You got to you gotta turn around. You got to sprint, turn back around and shoot. So it's more team focused in that regard. Like if you have, if your team is on it, you can take them down. But it's a drastically different feeling experience than uh, Left 4 Dead, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm just not a fan of how it works here. Um, like like the first couple days of the beta, they they were okay. Um, th there's a lot of difficulty balancing issues where easy is way too easy and medium is like way too punishing, punishingly brutal. They did fix that by the time the open beta came around, but. I don't, I don't even know if I can necessarily hold this against the game in that um, you're going to have as good of a time as good as your teammates are. So if your teammates are not helping each other out, they're just fucking off doing their own thing, you, you're not going to get anything done. It, it, it's it's going to be a hard, rough time. Um, even though, like, because of, because of the way it's special infected, they had lower health in Left 4 Dead, like, you could still handle yourself... Uh, even if some of your teammates were fucking off. Well, so um, and Biz just like left for dead. That if no one else in your team is doing anything, all of you are just gonna die. Like, yeah. Like, except, I just remember like old Xbox Live days of like getting in with like randos to play like left for dead, mm -hmm. and someone always like running ahead and protected no one else. And... Yeah, and and then I I also just I was talking to Corey about it. Uh, Rip, um, Corey's ghost. Still love you, Corey. <laughs> um, I, I, like, part of me also just forgets, and I have to be more cognizant about it. Just like, hey, I might have played a lot of Left 4 Dead 2 over the last twelve years. Uh, a lot of people have over the last twelve years. That's that's uh, been two console generations. So a lot of people aren't used to that format. Um, I'm kind of the exception to the rule. I'm one of those crazy people that has been playing the same game for twelve years uh, that hasn't gotten an update for like ten of those years. So. Uh, that one's probably on me, 
they introduced um so so you you can pick characters like you did in left for dead uh two left for dead one whatever but they actually have uh passive skills like you like some of them have you can you can equip like an extra grenade your person does like 10 percent more damage or this guy can spawn ammo like like when you whenever you kill an enemy they have a chance of, of dropping ammo and then they have this whole entire like card system with with uh, passives like you can turn your melee into a knife you can uh, you can get health back when you're at critical. You can increase your reload speed. Like, there's some customization you can do, and it's kind of based off like a. Um, it's kind of like a not numerical. What's the word I'm looking for? It's just a. It, it's a list. Like, uh, it's like one to fifteen cards. You you get to pick one for each round for I guess like levels whatever. Um. So so you can like plan out your builds and then like can adapt as needed uh based on whatever cards everyone else is using so mm -hmm. you uh so it's not quite like shuffling like randomizing but it kind of adds like a cool like uh roguelite aspect to it i wasn't a fan of, at, at the beginning i thought it like really bogged things down but once again the swing of it, it's pretty it's pretty nice and easy um one thing i do hope for the uh for, for the game when it does come out lower the freaking prep time on it because like I believe it was like three and a half minutes. So you would load into a match, like you pick your card in like ten seconds because you already know what you want to do, and then you're just sitting there waiting for someone to pick one card, and they're taking the entire three and a half minutes. You're like, I just want to play the game. That's is it. Is it that same feeling of when you go into a Rainbow Six match and? you load in pretty quickly because of your, like, internet, and it takes someone, like, three goddamn minutes for them uh, just to load in. And so uh, the character select screen for, like, three minutes. Not as quite, because the loading, I believe, happens before that. So you have to wait through the loading screen for everybody, <laughs> and then you load in, you pick your cards, and then you still have to wait for them. <laughs> it's, uh... I don't yeah. know. Hey, Roar, it's good to see you. Hello. Um, Hi, friend. Uh, in regards to if I see this lasting, I want to say yes, but they have some stuff to fix. Um, the one thing that they have hoped that they have addressed, um, I, I, I believe you saw it. They had an unfortunate. Um... Oh, hey, Emily. It's good. To, good, good. Thank you. Oh, discourse today. I, I don't believe this was discourse. I, I don't know. I... But also, it, I mean, I'd like to think of this. Hello. Um. I wasn't waving hello to like the ghost in my apartment, by the way. I saw it. <laughs> uh, listen, I don't know. Apparently an old man was here and then he just disappeared. So I don't know. Um, but like from what I saw, I just see it as an unfortunate algorithm thing. I'm totally glad they fixed it. Uh, but, let's uh, let's describe what it is real quick. It's uh, uh, so a bad zombie sound sounded like a very bad word. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, sound so, sounded like a very bad word. So, so they use like a bunch of uh, uh, randomized, or not not randomized. They they had like sounds and effects, and they use procedural generation <laughs> to like kind of like make zombie sounds. Probably and, then, and they just like put them onto a thing. Yeah, and uh, like I, I I will say I I I can kind of see why they didn't um catch it because you know there's a big difference between a qa department and a developer uh like they only have so many resources so many like individual playthroughs versus you know like opening up to the internet and you have like thousands and thousands and millions of people playing it like things are bound to uh pop up that did not come up in um in initial testing like that, that's just a reality of, of qa and then betas as, and whatnot as someone who's done play testing and that's as much as i can say without like snipers being trained on me as someone who <laughs> does that uh yeah they only have around six to four people in a play test room anyway so there's a very big chance that if you have like millions of different zombie sounds play test of only four to six people at a time are not going to get that very specific combination for what it's worth, I played it basically every day that the beta was out. I never ran into it once. It is it is a very unfortunate sound clip that came out yeah. because holy shit, when you watch that video, it straight up fucking sounds like it. It was like, yeah, oh it's, no. 
it's I, I I wouldn't call this a thing where someone's m maliciously put this in here. I'd call it as a very very no good bad accident. A, a series of unfortunate events. Yeah, say. literally, it's a series of unfortunate events, and I can't be even believe to begin the developers at that moment being like oh shit like oh god we did not attend for this we didn't expect this to happen like you know someone came into the office in the morning they're like wait what or that zoom call because no one's in the office right now oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we're like uh, it, uh the ai did not did not like like us today and everyone's like what are you talking about and they're like oh no yeah, like, I definitely don't think this was done maliciously. I just think this was a terrible combination of things. Yeah. That is oh, and, uh, no. Thank you for the uh, follow, Emily. Um, yeah, I, I think... totally believe it was not malicious. Someone just went, oh, shit. We can... these, these, these things combined at the wrong time, and it happened twice! <laughs> oh, no! Um, I think that might be about it. I have for Back for Blood. Do you, do you have any questions I might have? Uh knowledge or fuel units or lamborghinis about i have gotten over my love for those types of games if it's on game pass i'll play it it is if on game not, pass uh, okay then i guess i'll play it eventually but i, am, <laughs> I can't see myself playing this alone <laughs> like i can't oh oh I, I forgot um mm -hmm. i i'm very hopeful they'll fix it i would love to believe they'll fix oh, it Oh, they're going to um, they already said when they put out their statement that they're actively working on removing Oh, oh, not not that the uh, the bots uh, the the bots are fucking awful. Like they, yeah, no. they they are very attracted to the idea of running off and getting themselves killed and just leaving you, uh, for dead, for lack of better words. Um, yeah. Uh, Emily says, uh, legit dying for Psychonauts two tomorrow. Uh, sixteen year wait is real. Um, and as a Kingdom Hearts fan, I feel you. I have not played. Uh, Psychonauts 2, I've heard you don't have to play the first one, that there's even kind of like a funny recap of one into, but I always have this weird uh, instinct to be like, yep, nope, I gotta play them in order if they're available, so I mean, I've point... heard from a lot of people that the first one isn't very playable anymore, which... Mm. I I've kind of floated that question out, and um, I feel it kind of just depends on the people you ask, whether you know if their tastes um or tolerances kind of like line up with yours the people i've asked like if it holds up they say like they've generally said like yeah there might be like some weird quirks here there but overall it's still very playable but so I, i'm at least going to give uh the first one a try before i jump into two I, I just have a lot of stuff to play through so it is what it is um yeah uh Sarah, what is, what is a video game you wish to uh, discuss? I don't know whether I should start off with the ones I haven't played that much of and just go for like the bigger one at the at the end because I mean the only like the only game I put a gargantuan in like ten plus hours into as of right now has been Boyfriend Dungeon and I've done everything I want to do in that game up to this point so I don't know if I want to just get that out of the way now. I am extremely interested to hear what you have to say about Boyfriend Dungeon, because, okay. like, I, I, I will not get into the discourse. Me neither. Not doing that. That's but I, all, I want, all I want to say is, I think it is incredibly unfortunate that this game came out that people loved and all people could talk about was a tangentially related discourse. I think that's a little bit of a bummer. But I, I won't get into the rest of it. And the, the only thing I'll say about it as a Otome person who is very happy seeing this genre blow up westernly, Seeing it go through discourse like this depresses the fuck out of me, and y'all need to go outside and touch grass. Like, i not saying, like, the, the good people who have had the critiques and ways to fix it needs to go outside and touch grass. Those people are super great. But those who have sent harassments and done shit and obviously don't know how game development works needs to go outside and touch grass. Just, like, putting that out there. I've said, I've said my piece about it i am exhausted talking about the discourse <laughs> i've had to block words related to that game on twitter which sucks because i love that game uh spoilers for my discussion i love that game i adore boyfriend dungeon with all my heart uh even though one of my boyfriends broke my heart uh <laughs> i love everything about that game like i've never been addicted to a combat loop in a really long time but the boyfriend dungeon combat loop had me for for like a a good week 
I haven't bought the game on Switch because the combat loop was so satisfying. If I ever wanted to go back and just restart on a new game, I'll just pop in my Switch and do it. Because, yeah, I adore that game. Uh, it's it's really pretty. The art's really, really pretty. Uh, the people you can date are really, really pretty. Um, uh, uh, sorry, speaking of thing, I actually bought an Oculus Quest 2 so I could play Resident Evil 4 when it comes out. Nice. For one game. Uh, but, like, yeah, so, um, for those who don't know, Boyfriend Dungeon is a mimic, is a mixture of a roguelike and a Otome dating sim, Otome slash visual novel dating sim, where you can date both men, women, and non-binary pals. Um, but the thing is, you date your weapons. So, uh, so basically, plot is your main main character goes to live with their cousin for the summer in between college semesters, uh, because you've never been on a date, and your and your cousin promised to find you a date, and you basically fly to like fantasy, real life fantasy version of Florida. Uh, it's a lot better there, I promise. Um, oh wait, it's in Florida. Uh, it, it's like fantasy version of Miami. Like it's obviously meant to be Miami, but they call it something different. Okay, oh, um, I got worried for a second. Yeah, no. Um, and your cousin starts setting you up on dates, and your cousin's like, hey man, you should fight your fears while you're here. Why don't you go down to the dunge, which is what they call the dungeons, the debt. and go face your fears. And what these dungeons do is you can basically face your inner fears in them. So your character has fears about commitment, about love, about being on their own, that kind of thing. So you go into your first dungeon, and he's like, hey, my friend promised to help train you. He'll be in the dunge waiting for you, and you find out that his friend is this rapier named Isaac, who is a man named Isaac who turned into a rapier, and he teaches you combat and how to fight and stuff. And then you start collecting swords and different types of weapons and stuff like that. And you level them up, and you fight with them. And as you level them up, you go on dates. Either they platonic or romantic, it doesn't matter. You just go on dates. And uh, you- question, question, do you, do you get a say in whether it's platonic or romantic, or is it kind of, like, predetermined? Uh, you do get a say. Um, I just did all of them rom- romantic because I am a hopeless romantic. Um, but so I just did all of them like that. Uh, I will say some of them seem kind of forced romantic to an extent. Uh, and, but not all of them end, not like they don't end very well. But uh, I'm not spoiling who, but the person I picked the first time broke broke up with me, and that was what, what was supposed to happen, uh, which I didn't know. And I was like, no. Um, <laughs> Emily, uh, does the game have a character creator? Yes, it has a very simplistic character creator where you can change your character's hair, hair, hair color, skin color, uh, pronouns, and then you get outfits throughout the game that you can change into. It's a very basic, um, and your character is meant to be... Um, like a gender neutral type of thing that you can change your pronouns. Um, Yeah. And then some items, which I found out later on, some items give you different buffs. uh, So your dates will give you stuff. And I got like glasses from one of the swords I was dating. And it let me see farther into the dungeon than where I was just at, which let me see like enemies and stuff. Um, but uh, the combat is very simplistic dungeon crawling stuff. Uh, it is randomly generated dungeons, so every time you go in, it's going to look different. But there's always going to be a elevator on, on every third or fifth floor that gives you access back up, and you get points for even if you die in the dungeon or if you decide to leave. And that's how you level both your character up and your swords up. And the cute thing is, there's even little rest areas in the dungeon to where you can have little cute, like, dialogue with whoever that you're carrying. Be like, oh, here's massage chairs, or here's, like, ice ice cream, or here's an ice skating rink, or here is a stage. Like, it's it's really cute. Um, again, the art style is incredibly cute. All the characters are cute. Uh, I'm a sucker for uh, one type of uh, dateable character, and he's totally in there. So I was just like, hey, um... A uh, question for you. you: You said the gameplay was on the, um, I guess, on the simpler side. How would you contrast it to something like Hades? Uh, it's much more simpler than Hades. Like less, like are you getting abilities for each floor you go through, or they're oh. I, I... so 
Sorry, I keep cutting you off. Go. Oh, no, 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 it, it's all good. I, I it, you go. Ahead. No, 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 go. It's it's the stupid uh lag. I'm 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 getting to be completely. Oh no, I, I was just trying to think of like oh what, what would be different. So uh, I know you get different weapons because they're uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, uh, non-binary people. Um, so you're using different weapons like on different runs. Are are you getting different powers? Um, are you buying items, stuff like that? Yeah, basically what Canty said. It's a lot more basic. Okay. Every time you you go on a new date with one of your weapons, you unlock a new ability for that. So I use the I used a Sunder a lot. I can't remember what his sword was what was was called, but his sword's main ability was bleed. So I think after level four, I unlock the ability that bleed happens when you hit enemies more often. Or okay. I know with the uh, lance level three, you can unlock the ability to throw it. So it's just one of those things where, like, what, when you go on the dates and you use the swords more, you unlock more abilities. Items you get items because you can gift them to your swords, and it raises their like love meter up. But you don't really get items to help your character. Yeah, they're all, like, passives. Okay. Like, all the abilities are, like, passives. So, like, you get new abilities, but they're not as, like, game-changing as you think they are. It's a very simple dungeon crawler. It's not meant to be... What's the term? It's not meant to be really anxiety-inducing. I mean, some floors, there's a lot of enemies that they throw at you, but if you know how to use your abilities very well, you'll be fine. Would you describe it as like it, it does the job in the sense of the real like the like, like the game knows like the real meat and bones is the narrative and that's yes. it. OK, yeah, that's because fair from, from, from what a lot of people have said in their reviews and stuff. Is that they thought the combat would be the focus of it when that's not the point. The combat is just a part of it. Uh, I would say um, Emily, so the story and character growth is supposed to be the focus. Yes. Basically, you and how you connect with these characters are supposed to be the focus of it. Uh, the combat's just kind of there to help you level up uh, swords and help you like face your fears and fight bosses and stuff. Okay. But it is a lot of fun. Um, I am a huge Atome person. I'm a huge dating sim person. For those who don't know, Atome or Atogays are female-driven dating sims. Those are my fa- That's one of my favorite genres. Um, and seeing one kind of for better or for worse, blow up in the Western image is very cool. I just wish it didn't get the discourse that it did, because this game is a lot of fun, and I think a lot of people should give it a try. Um, yeah, Canty, this is a 20-person studio. Like, this is an indie studio who made their first dating sim, and they did a pretty solid, great job. Like, all the characters are well-written, they're fun. Obviously, all the characters have flaws. Um... And your character also has flaws that they learn to, like, deal with. It's an important game, and I just wish more people didn't listen to the discourse and actually gave it a chance. Because it is an incredibly well-written, it's funny, the combat for what it is is very fun, and it has a very satisfying gameplay loop to it. Um, The music is some of my favorite music in, like, a game as of, like, up-to-date. Like, it's really good. It has, like, very soft, like, lo-fi feelings to it. Um, it has like lyrics and stuff. Like it, it's it's a generally good game because of all the discourse that it got. People are seemingly forgetting that. Like like I think um, I think I think it's kind of an understated thing where uh, negative associations uh, with, with like any piece of media can can turn people off. Like regardless of what they think of the actual piece of media, so much as the surrounding discussion. Um, I, I know that there's some Cowboy Bebop stuff that, that got announced, uh, I believe, today. Um, I have been very hesitant to watch uh, Cowboy Bebop for many years because I had an ex that loved it and uh, she was very fucking mean, to put it lightly. Uh, so just by association, I kind of have, I don't want to say a grudge, but I am hesitant to enjoy Cowboy Bebop. Um I, I think something very similar to that has happened to people with Boyfriend Dungeon. Just like, oh, here's this discourse and uh, just don't even want to check out the game because of it. And I think that's I think that sucks. Uh, yeah, because and, I, the game deserves the love. And the one thing that the discourse also did, I know we said you were not going to talk about it, 
But the one thing Ghost Cross also did was spoil a very big part of the game, which will forever piss me off. Because I definitely think Boyfriend Dungeon is a game you need to go into without looking anything up. I mean, obviously, there is content warnings, and they just updated the content warnings, so that's really important. But I also feel like you should go into that game not knowing much about it, because it has a bunch of really cool surprises and character moments in it that are just very well done. I, I think this is going to tie into the to the game I want to talk about next. Um, I mean, we, we go on for Boyfriend Dungeon for like the like an hour i don't care I'm, I'm i'm not here to dictate oh. time limits oh um, i mean i definitely want to talk about other stuff that i've played yeah. so it's cool to switch back and forth but uh last yeah. minute thoughts it's fun i like dating sims i like people i like boys <laughs> i don't like when boys break 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 up with me that shit hurt I actually made <laughs> talk about it <laughs> but it um really hurt and I still am hurt. <laughs> I can't listen to one of the songs off the soundtrack now because it reminds me of it and i just get sad <laughs> I'm just like, uh, ouch! The game hasn't hurt me like this in a while. Like, <laughs> but, um, but, but yeah, like I, I'll, I'll stand behind that. Like, I, I think there should basically be content warnings for basically anything. Like, I, 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 I had some people point out to me, um, what's the website? Uh, Does the dog die? Dot com, and it has like detailed uh, content warnings for for pieces of media, whether it's books, movies, TV shows, games. Um, I guess like even I am B- I am uh, why can I not say IMBD does it also um, was under like parental warning. I don't know if it's called parental warnings. It, it's something like along those lines. But the, the only thing I will say is I think it's lame. The discourse came after a game that gave a shit to have a content warning. Like the, mm-hmm. there's debate as to whether. Um, the, the initial content warning was sufficient or not. Like, I, I won't get into that. But I think making the discourse surrounding the game that, at, like, one of the few games out there that has tried to have a content warning um, instead of the other 99% of media, including the game I'm about to talk about, the other 99% of media that, that do not even try, um, I, I, I think that sucks. Because the developers re- gave a shit. That, you know, I'm, I'm just going to stop. I, I don't want to go into any further. I just, I'm, I'm stopping right I, now. What did I say at the beginning of this? Yeah, I. What did I say? Yeah, it it was inevitable. It it, it was Thanos. It, it it's true. Um, fuck. What did I say? Yeah. Yeah. Hashtag. Uh, listen to Sarah. Sarah's always right, except for some of the times. But even then, Sarah's still uh, right. Who voted me the best? The best opinion had her. They did. You to did. Be, to be fair, I wasn't on that poll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You probably, you, you probably still won anyway. <laughs> <You're awesome. laughs> oh, good. Um, I, I will take my second place like a fucking champ. Um, probably won't even get that, to be honest. <laughs> um, the only gun marked this time code. But yeah, Boyfriend Dungeon, it's out. It's on Game Pass. Um, yes, it is. So you have no excuse. <laughs> I don't know if it's on X Cloud, which is the streaming service you can do on your Android phones. You can do on, I believe you can do on PC now, but you can play on Xbox. You can play it on uh, oh, PC. Sorry. So it's also on Switch. So oh, I didn't know that. It's a perfect Switch game. Nice. So get on everything. Support those damn devs. Damn it. Hell yeah. Um, the next game I want to talk about is uh, Outlast Two. Uh, it was on Game Pass. I, th- I think you've, I think you've even owned it on PC for a while. I just never got around to it. Um, I a demo. When that played... came out. Oh, I didn't even know there was a demo. Like way back when it first came out, I think it was like the first like fifteen twenty minutes. Uh, I I don't even know. So, so just just story premise. Um, Outlast Two hasn't. Mm, it doesn't have anything major to do with Outlast One. Outlast one is you going to a asylum for um, ment. I don't know the correct way to say it. You go to a, a, an asylum filled with uh, cr- criminals, and they're all trying to fucking kill you. It's it's a pretty good horror game. Uh, second game, you crash into a, a mountain region somewhere, and there's a bunch of cultists. It's 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 really fucking brutal. It's yeah, it, it it's it's beyond fucked up. Like if if you Man, this this game, like, 
Me personally, I'm good. I can go to any piece of media, spoiler free, content warning free, and I'm good. But damn, this game is like over the top, fucking non-stop brutal, like step by step by step by step. It is. It's gruesome. Like there's people getting flayed, there's limbs getting cut off, there's babies of the dead variety in pits. It's there's pit of babies. I remember the pit of babies. It's that uh but I, it's okay. I, I'm it, really if you if you love horror movies, if you love gore, this is absolutely gonna be up your alley. Like me and my girlfriend, we we love freaking oh completely over the top horror movies. Um but like I, I, I will always stand behind the argument that uh, does Outlast two ha also have dicks? Yes, it has many a dicks. <laughs> yes, I, I, I feel like some of those developers giggle to themselves as they like painfully sculpt in like v, v brush like the creepy dicks that they put into that that game. Because I mean, come on, you kind of have to. Like if you're designing dicks in anything, you have to <laughs> laugh about it to an extent. It's, like, it's it's uh, ninety nine percent blood and gore, sixty nine percent dicks. Um, the one thing I will say, you said it wasn't connected. Actually, all the Outlast games are connected via. I, I, I don't. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, they just just like I mean, you can say that they're all connected. You just like you just like you you, you just don't have to spoil they, it. There, there's some sinew between uh, between them. I'll say that. I will say I do like how they connect everything. The way that they connect everything is kind of interesting to me. Uh, the way that they did it in Outlast 1 and the way that they do it in 2, I will give them that much. That it's, mm -hmm. an, that it's an interesting horror premise to me. Um, at least to me anyway, but I like weird horror shit, and that's all Outlast 1 was, was weird yeah. horror shit. Um, uh, to, to Emily's... You talking about the limbs flay kind of made me like laugh a little bit, because I remember when I was like 9, playing like Gears of War and chainsawing people for the first time, being like <laughs> and now I look, at, I look at Outlast and I'm like I can't see what's being played off because the graphics are so bad. <laughs> this might seem extremely premature to me. I don't have kids. I plan on having kids in the future. I would much rather my kids sooner play Gears of War than Outlast. Like, you could say, like, hey, Gears of War, they're chainsawing dudes, but, like, tonally, it's totally fucking goofy as shit. Outlast 2, Gore? Oh, it is. Like, ah, oh, fuck. I was saying something earlier. Um,. This is probably one of my favorite horror games of all time, and it's purely because like, I'll always argue that the power of horror games inherently have so much more power than horror movies because you're the one that has to press the stick. You're the one that has to hide. You're the one that has to confront it. A horror movie, you, if, if, even if you're scared of shit, you can close your eyes. You can wait for the part to be over like, yeah, no, you can't do that in a game. It's it's fucked. Um, but they just have their pacing down to a freaking T. And like, I feel like that's a lost, um, no, no one really talks about it in games and, and, uh, it's, it's a lost art, especially with, uh, with open world stuff, like, like any, any facade of like pacing and like, uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, that that's just out the window, like, like main pacing and like, and the front facing narrative, like that, that's, that's just gone. Uh, when you can do like 50 hours of stuff in between. So this is just a, Oh yeah, yes, uh, Candy. Dead Space Two is very good in that regard. Uh, Dead. I I was also going to point out Outlast and Dead Space, like the games that came around in that era, the horror games. I think mastered pacing to to like an insane degree. Like that was a time in horror game releases that pacing could not be beat. Like mm -hmm. horror games were killing it. Like the original Outlast does pacing so well with you just, like, going into the asylum in the first, like, 30 minutes, and you start to see spooky shit, and spooky shit jumps out at you, but the pacing in that game climbs up very incredibly well to what it's showing you. And Dead Space 1 and Dead Space 2 especially. Like, just horror games in that era were so well done. And it's pacing where it was outmatched. I don't know what the fuck happened. I mean, the Resident Evil 2 and 3 like, are really good, pacing-wise. And, like, I think Resident Evil 7 and 8 were also really good. But, mm -hmm. like... I don't know what happened after that. We just don't get good paced horror games anymore. Yeah. And then, um, it's because what the first one came out, was it 2012 or 2013? I feel like it came out on PC first. I could it be does. wrong. Cause then I remember it, it was a PlayStation plus title. It was yeah. Like three PlayStation plus titles. 
that's how I played it. Um, so I, I believe LS2 came out to uh, 2017. Like from what I have seen, it's a I don't know if they're technically an indie team. I think they have like 30 or 40 people on the team. But man, this this game looks so fucking good. Like it looks better than a lot of uh, a lot of even more recent AAA games I've played. Like it runs at 4K 60 even on a uh, I guess Xbox One X. So last mid gen console whatever. But Man, it just looks good. It plays good. It's so fucking expertly paced. I, I, I haven't even talked about the one the one thing I love the most about it. It's um, I'm surprised other games haven't done it. So you know, like uh, uh, you know, Sarah, the first game you're using a um, you're using a camera the whole time. Yeah, and so you, the screen gave me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> it's like even at uh, sorry, Sarah's dying right now. It'll be okay. Um, so, so you can like record stuff you can zoom in but but the key way that it plays in is that you're you're constantly using the the night vision mode on the camera because like it doesn't it does not matter how much you fuck with your with your brightness settings there's just going to be areas you cannot fucking see in unless you're using night vision and um that's a limited resource you have to find new batteries and it's it's not a big issue if you're if you're going forward at a decent pace it's, it's basically just so you're not killing a lot of time to, to like kind of give you that extra push for forward momentum um but but even if you're trying to preserve like you could be hiding in the dark you turn on the uh the night vision you see someone like maybe they're turning the corner you maybe you think they see you turn off the light and you're just listening listening to footsteps coming close oh by the way you need to play this shit with headphones like any horror game play with headphones <laughs> um th- there's um there's one thing they added in here that's not in the first game. It has a the camera has a microphone, like a directional microphone, so you can you can toggle it on and you can get a better idea of, of where people are just based off of sound, like whether they're talking or they're walking around. And there is a segment in there where you specifically have to use it, and it is one of the creepiest fucking things I have seen in a game to date. Um, yeah, I I, I can gush about Outlast two all day. It is one by far one of the best horror games I've ever played. Um, if, if not being able to fight back against enemies is isn't your thing, this isn't the game for you. You can't do shit, which is kind of funny because you would think at points like, yes, these are scary people and things you're, you're that are trying to kill you, but you would think at some point your character would be willing to square up by like throwing a rock or something. No, like no, this this guy is a pacifist. He doesn't want to do shit. Um, yeah, one of the best horror games of all time. I know Blaine on Twitter highlighted that there's some uh, problematic stuff with Outlast 1. There's some problematic stuff there's in 2. Stuff but in, There's definitely some worse stuff in 2. Yeah, so uh, mm-hmm. important to highlight that stuff. But yeah, still overall, one of my favorite horror games of all time. I would highly recommend it. Uh, that, that content warning list is really fucking high. So if, if you need content warnings for anything... Um, please, for the love of God, look it up because that game does not have a content warning. If you want to be upset about a game not having a content warning, be upset at Outlast too. Um, yeah, that, that's that's about all I have to say about Outlast. Too, unless unless you have any questions. No, I I played it. Just at the time when I played it, I wasn't a fan of horror games that survived itself gen- like done nothing but jump scares because my anxiety can't do that. Uh, it's the reason my Dead Space 1 is so entirely hard for me to play, um, because that game just relies on it, and while I love the Dead Space series with all of my heart, and I'm so excited about the new one, um, or about the remake of the first one, I guess, I don't like when horror games seem to rely on that, and I feel like the Outlast series does, and also they're weirdly making a co-op game next that still takes place in the same universe. Yeah, it's called what the uh, the Outlast <laughs> Trials. Yeah, and it takes place in the same universe. They confirmed on their website that it takes place that it's a prequel to both Outlast One and Outlast Two. That Let's takes see. place in the sixties, I think, in the sixties or the fifties. It takes place in one of those, but they said it's a prequel and it's going to answer some of the questions that one and two raised. But it's going to be specifically played in co-op, which is weird. But, um, I mean, but no, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out, I guess. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I'll probably like watch someone else play it, but it's not my thing. I don't, I mean, the only co op horror I do are the Resident Evil games that are co op, and that's about it. Um, because I feel like horror should be handled 
alone. Like, I don't think you should be poor with uh, with other people. I agree with that. Absolutely. So it just kind of destroys the... I mean, like, obviously, there's, like, there's, like, phantasmophobia and stuff like that, which work well with other people, but I also am just on the thing where horror should be single player. For what it's worth, phasmophobia is still scary as shit. <laughs> Go up. Oh, Corey, no. Corey can attest to that. Oh, no, I'm sure. It's just, to me, seeing all these, like, co-op horror games or is, 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 is very weird. Like, it's very strange to me to see all these games that are co-op that ride itself on being scary. is like, super funky to me. But, I mean, hey, if that's what people are into, I'm definitely not one to judge. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's go over some of these uh, questions and statements in here. Uh, Emily mostly remembers, uh, I guess, Outlast 1 because of the creepy doctor with his dick. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> your, your head is here mm. right at it. But, like, yeah, yeah, it's I I've, I haven't played that in like eight years, but maybe I might have to go back uh, to see some flailing dick. Uh, no, it's not as good as you think it is. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. I think it came out a year before, but not sure. Remember 2017 for being the Persona 5 slash near Automata year. That is a good way to remember uh, yeah. 20, yep. 20, 2017 was a fucking good year for games. You got Mario, you got Breath of the Wild, Persona 5, Nier, uh, Horizon, Resident Evil 7. It was also when the Switch came out. Tangerompa V3, Eternal Game of the Year came out 2017. Uh, like, that was a crazy year. 2017 is a good fucking year for games. Uh, King, Kingdom Hearts and Resident Evil came out on the same day. Kingdom Hearts 3? Uh, 2.8. Okay, there we go. One that had a 3 3- in it and the weird movie and the 0.2 like the first playable demo of kingdom hearts 3 that came out the same day as Resident Evil 7 oh sh- yeah that was a crazy day <laughs> see uh emily says if you guys really enjoy spooky stuff half-life alex is actually pretty spooky surprisingly I have- oh I, I was just going to say there's a lot of like good horror stuff even in half-life 2 like in ravenholm so i imagine in vr it's just like in- it's-, it's just inherently way scarier yeah, I just imagine head crabs in VR. That's just where my brain goes. If a head crab jumps on you and kills you, do you just see like it's inside of its little chest belly, just in front of your eyes, or how how does that work? I mean, that sounds like a that sounds like if a face hugger jumps on you, or it sounds like <laughs> that uh, that uh, VR Alien Covenant like experimental film that they came out with, where you're playing like a chest. Burster, like trying to wriggle out of someone's chest. Oh shit! And it's like I, I watched someone posted it online where you could watch it with like non NVR, so it kind of kills the like kills the like meaning of it. But that's incredibly creepy because you're literally like playing a chest burster. It just like woke up and is trying to like get its way out, and you hear like <laughs> cracking of the like ribs and stuff. It's cool. <laughs> if you are able to find that, please send that to me. I, I would love to see uh, that. I think it's on the Oculus store. I can boot up my Oculus after we're done and I can check it to see if it's on there still. Okay. But yeah, let's, like that was really creepy. See, so, uh, Candy says Jose played a, vo- you know what? <sighs> Man, I, I've been, I've been meaning to cause you've recommended it before. And it's just a lot of things evade my mind. What everything goes like out one or in one ear, out the other, just the list of games is ever increasing. And that's definitely something I need to get around to. Um, Emily says, like to hear about the, oh, the, uh, problematic stuff, uh, from what I recall from Blaine is that, uh, the DLC for Outlast one, uh, there's a, I mean, there, there's a, there's a stuff with, um, the people, uh, what, what's, what's the word? De- dehumanizing people's mental illness. Cause you know, you're in asylum. It's crazy. People It's kind of using that aesthetic. Um, the game justifies it by saying like they were criminals. Um, Take it as you will. Um, in the first, I guess, first and only DLC for the first game, um, there's a there's a enemy called the Groom. I guess he castrates people and turns people into his brides. Yes. Uh, that can be seen as a cis. Uh, how do you say it? Cis, cis sexist. Um, that that's how Blaine has explained it to me. Outlast Two has a trans character that later um, does undesired sexual things um to yourself um that's not a great optic look when that's the only uh, representation within your game um so yeah important to point that stuff out still uh still a great game in my eyes uh but just important to point that out 
Uh, last tweet about yeah, Series X, incredible console, absolutely freaking love it. It is is my go to console. Um, yeah, that 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 part of the game's rough. Um, yeah, that 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 game needs a huge content warning for many 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 reasons. Um, if that's a game, if there's a game to get mad at for lack of content warning, that that is the one. Uh, but if you're able to put up with that, or able to separate art from artists, or wh- whatever tangentially related things, still a great game. I highly recommend it. Uh, Sarah, what is something you wish to talk about? I started Assassin's Creed Syndicate again! Oh my god, it's such a great game! I miss just yeah, people is. walk up to people, stab them in the neck, and like slide my top hat on, and like, walk back away. Cheerio. <laughs> I, that's a way to start that. Uh, I... It was like two dollars on sale on Xbox Live, and I don't know why my brain. Because I still need to finish the Watch Dogs Legion DLC. I feel so bad I haven't finished Bloodlines yet. But when I started it up, I didn't. I was like so burnt out of like giant open world content, and Bloodlines just throws you into London, but a Zayden, and like that's it. And I'm like, oh, Watch Dogs Legion is such a big game because it is. It's a huge fucking game, and I was just like, oh, I don't know. But so I was on my, uh, I, w- I had beaten Boyfriend Dungeon and I didn't know what else to do. So I went ahead and I was like, I don't know why my brain went to Assassin's Creed Syndicate. But I was like, man, don't I have Syndicate? Because I got it on like Xbox Live or something. So I went to check and I didn't have it and I was going to buy it. And I was like, okay, if it's still like 20 bucks, I'm not going to not gonna buy it. It was on sale for like $2.98. And I would be kind of stupid if I didn't grab this for like $2.98. So I did. And wow, I missed that game. Like, it still looks incredibly beautiful and hasn't even gotten the 60 FPS patch. Odyssey just got the 60 FPS patch, like, two days ago. But, like, oh, I God, didn't even know that. That's that's cool. Yeah, Odyssey got the 60 FPS patch two days ago. But God forbid Syndicate gets it when the game is already running pretty damn well and looks really, really good. Um, I just miss Assassin's Creed games being Assassin's Creed games again. Like, it makes me very sad that, like, we don't have it where you can just walk up behind somebody, stab them in the neck, and, like, walk away. Like, I miss I, doing that. I, I will say, I, I don't work. I don't remember. No, I, okay, I do remember. Um, this, how do I want to approach this? In, in the newer RPG, like, uh, Assassin's Creed games, I find it to be a giant bummer when you go to assassinate someone and they don't just die. Yeah, like, Syndicate, there's been multiple times I've like run up the street and there's and there's been a blighter that's just like, Oi! And I and I don't <laughs> like the way that he's staring at my, at my hat. So I just walk over to him and I shank him in the neck and he drops. And the game's like, here's your 25 experience. And I'm just like, I literally just stabbed that man and he's dead. Like this is great. I, I like how you specified like, staring at your hat specifically. Specifically. I mean I I I have Jacob in the dumb outfit where he has the great top hat on. Because if you have him in anything else, that's wrong. So it's like, it's, I miss Assassin's Creed games when they were Assassin's Creed games. Like, I have Valhalla sitting on my shelf, because I got it as a Christmas gift, and I have not touched it. I know I should, I want to, because I enjoy Assassin's Creed's weird time travel story, but, like, playing through Syndicate, it makes me remember how much I miss them just being Assassin's Creed games. Like, sneaking into an area and being able to take out all the guards just by stabbing them in the back of the neck incredibly quickly, and then being able to like loot all the crates and then kill the dude from afar by throwing a knife into his eye. Mm-hmm. Like, I miss being able to do that. Like, because it it makes the game not really it makes it easier, but it also makes it like more smoother. Like, you you can get through getting an area done, then go do another area a couple minutes after. And I feel like Watch Dogs Legion replicated that really really well, and I. Uh, once again, coincidence, because it also takes place in London, I guess. And I now have a crazy theory that one of the people you can get in your, like, party in Watch Dogs Legion is related to Jacob and Evie, uh, which would be pretty cool. But, um, but like, I miss when the Assassin's Creed games were like that. Like, this, I will say this, this isn't making me want to go back and, like, do all the Assassin's Creed games like you did, even though I love two. Because I'm a crazy person. Yes. But also, like, I feel like Syndicate was the pinnacle of, of Assassin's Creed. Like, we got S- Syndicate after 4, and 4 was very good, and I think Syndicate hit that peak of, like, oh, this is an Assassin's Creed game. It has interesting characters behind it, 
It has an interesting background because it's not like it was ancient. Like it was like 1886 London. Like it was like it was in a newer time period that no game had really touched on. That wasn't like the Sherlock Holmes games. Like and it was touched on in such an awesome way. And I think the Templars mixed in with the way that they did London really well. And it's just like I just I missed it. Like I missed Assassin's Creed games when they were like that. And now, like, every day I'm putting an hour and two into Syndicate because I'm just going through and liberating all the areas. Again, coincidentally, just like how I played Legion, because I just liberated all the areas first. And, Wait, like, I, it's just, it's fun. I, I, I think we're basically on the exact same wavelength where I vastly prefer the older style of Assassin's Creed game versus the new ones. Like, the new, new ones got some good stuff going on for them, but I enjoy the more... I, I feel it's reductive. I, I feel it's reductive when I say this, but I enjoy the more simple nature of the Assassin's Creed games up to uh, up to Syndicate, where you just have a city that you're in. You're going around doing stuff. You go stab dudes. It's you could call it comfort food, I guess, but I, I don't know. I I, 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 I I don't know. I just fucking enjoy them. Like Assassin's Creed. Okay, Assassin's Creed Two doesn't have it, but. Br- I believe Brotherhood onward. I know Brotherhood started it. I don't re- remember if Syndicate does the same thing. Where once you manage to pull off like one uh, parry against an enemy, you just turn into a murder machine where everyone's dying in one hit. It is like the most fucking beautiful thing you could pull off. Oh, it's so fucking you need to cool. Upgrade to get that because at the moment I don't have that. So you I think I, I, upgrade. I totally forgot. Doesn't um. Syndicate actually has a bit of a skill tree for each individual character, right? Yes. Uh, yeah. they, they, they have the same ability, but you can input them differently. So, like, I'm playing Jacob and Evie kind of the same, because the game's like, oh, Jacob's a better fighter, Evie's a better uh, 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 assassin, which story-wise, that's true. But gameplay-wise, they work the same way. <laughs> like, like, they work <laughs> the same way, so... If- if I remember uh, correctly, and like you're the one with the more recent experience, obviously, um, Evie is like she's like so maybe it's like some of the later skills, but she's more tailor made for like the stealthy stuff, whereas uh, Jacob's uh, the better brawler, right? Yes, Evie's the better uh, sneak up and stab. Jacob's more willing to punch you in the face. So it's like I, I mean, I, I like Evie as a character. I like playing as Jacob a bit better because I love to see this big burly stalking man like hiding behind someone. <laughs> before like stabbing them but that's just my own personal preference that dude's got freaking broad ass shoulders freaking oh quarterback god Jacob, or something jacob's big and i like that but uh but like they're both incredibly interesting char- characters i love how their personalities clash like also i love when they're just brother and sister in like cutscenes. Yeah. like that's just so much fun and again i think they peaked with with like syndicate as like some of the best characters some of the best stories some of the best gameplay like and I totally forgot, like, the first half of that game, Jacob's just like, I want to start a gang. And Evie's like, no. And he's like, oh, yes. And then he starts the stupid game. Like, it's, it's like, I forgot that that's his whole purpose throughout the entire game is to be, like, the best game leader ever. <laughs> like, that's mm-hmm. literally all he's doing. Like, he's like, that's all of his quest. He's like, all right, I'm going to take over London. I'm going to be the best game leader ever. <laughs> And it's just like it's like, dude, that's not the point. While we're here, <laughs> like, it's like we're literally trying to stop the end, the end of the world. And this, and this himbo is like, no, I'm going to be the best game leader in London. <laughs> I mean, I hope you do that. It's just like it's so much fun. And now that I think about it, I'm sad they didn't do any connection between that and Legion. I mean, an assassin's character did just get put into Legion, and she's very obviously an assassin. But I'm still like, they could have done something cool. <laughs> I say this with I say this with no intentional derision. Um, is more so just a critique of uh, uh, Ubisoft and you know sex of shit whatever. I, I I will always find it super fucking weird that Evie wasn't um the on, the only character in in uh, Syndicate because like the from what I recall the intended plan was to just like have this be evie's game and then they're just like oh no fuck fuck we can't do that our, our audience is gonna is gonna fucking get mad we need we need to put a uh a male character in at least and then um kind of the same thing happened with um assassin's creed odyssey where Cass- cassandra was intended to be the character 
and they're just like, oh, no, 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 fuck, 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 we gotta put in Alexios, which, um, without spoilers for Odyssey, um, that's, that, that is, um, fronted as a choose your character where only one of these is the, the character versus two actually existed. I don't want to get into spoilers. Uh, and then Valhalla does some weird stuff where you can choose, but then there's a mode where you swap between depending on the cutscenes, which is more appropriate, which is a really fucking weird stance. It's, yeah. It's, well, it's really weird because around this time, I'm pretty sure that Assassin's Creed Vita game came out, the one that had like Avaline in it. And Avaline Li- is a Liberation, female. right? Yeah, and she got her own game with no I- issues. And apparently that game was very fun. And then this this comes out, and and like if it was just Evie, I would have been totally fine. And I don't know if they. Oh, but before I forget, before I, I hate to interrupt, but before I forget, the the cynic in me feels. I, I I how do I put this? The cynic in me feels like they they gave it a pass on um, they they gave a, I'm sorry, what's the character's name in Liberation? Aveline. Aveline. It's Aveline. either Aveline or Aveline. I feel bad. I forget. Aveline. Um, part of me feels. I don't know why I'm feeling shitty because I feel it's a shitty thing that they did where they're just like, okay, well, we can give the woman protagonist, we can give the, uh, if, I, if I recall correctly, she's uh, black also, right? Yes. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll give the black woman character a game, but we're not going to have it be a mainline. We're going to put it on this platform that nobody's fucking playing on. I, th- I think it's kind of. During the time was around when Ubisoft's uh, sexism was very bad i mean it's still bad don't get me wrong it is still very very bad but like around this time was when it was starting to come out if that makes sense mm-hmm. um, like when like the stuff was starting to come out like how oh evie was supposed to be the main character of syndicate then they put her brother in because they didn't think that a uh, female driven assassin's creed would sell and then origins had the same problem uh by ex-wife i forget her name to save my life and i, feel I believe aya Aya, because I loved Origins. Like, let me just say I love Syndicate, and I say Syndicate's, like, the peak, but I liked Origins a lot, but Origins was when they started to go towards the major, like, open-world stuff. Uh, Aya was meant to be the main character of Origins, because, I mean, spoiler, she founds the Assassin's Order. Like, the Assassin's Order was founded by a woman. Yeah, that's so weird to me. You you play as Bayek, and, like, and just, like, relativity, the dude's kind of, like, stale bread, and then, like, Everything that has to do with the main plot actually has to do with the name of the game. The origins of the assassins is Aya. It's or she's which again. I don't want this to be a hit on her character. Um, she's a grieving widow, literally almost the entire game, and that's yep. all we technically know her as. Even though we know that they're both like we know from the get go, they're both trained killers. Like we know this. Like the mm-hmm. game tells you that that's why they're together because the train killers who 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 fell in love they had a kid but then for three fourths of the game i is a grieving widow because the whole plot is that their son dies and you know what I, for what you know yeah. what i forgot um it was unity that came out 2014 i believe who where, they, the they, where, yeah, where they where they didn't put um uh, w- playable women characters in the multiplayer because their their quoted reason was, uh, we didn't have time to uh, animate her. We don't have the budget to do animations, and it's just like, oh my fucking god, dude! In Unity, yeah, because so I never played Unity, or I played it, but I played it when it was super buggy, so I stopped playing it. Um, apparently, that's still a very good game, but um, like that female main character, if I remember people talking about it, was incredibly more interesting than fucking what was his name arno i i don't remember shit about I'm unity i'm pretty sure his name was arno she was like far more interesting than arno was because she was like the daughter of a templar if i remember correctly the key it's thing like, i re- romeo and juliet type of thing where he was a the he was the son of a uh assassin she was the daughter of a templar the, the key thing i remember about unity is um so i i'm of the stance for like contemporary assassin's creed games I don't care about the future stuff. I don't care about the current timeline. I, I would much prefer if these are just like individual vignettes, just into like cool pieces of history. Um, but, but like for a while after Assassin's Creed 3, like they just did not know what to do with the future stuff. And I, I would say with Valhalla, maybe they're actually doing some interesting things. Um, my cat's yelling at me right now. Um, hard to concentrate, Mac. <laughs> uh, the. The, um, the cooler future stuff in that era was all in comics. 
because you had there was the Soviet Union era uh, assassin guy. I think it was like World War One, and then there was Clay, who is my favorite Assassin's Creed character, who was just a random human character who is from the comics. Like, all the interesting stuff in that era was told in outside media, which really sucked. Yeah, um, shit, what was I gonna say? Oh, but yeah, the, the part that pissed me off about Unity is that, so it's, it's doing, like, this whole facade of just, like, okay, we don't know what we're doing with the future timeline. Okay, okay now you're just fucking with shit, Mac. I, I swear, do not get a cat, Sarah. They are- I, My grandma's deathly allergic, I would never have a chance to. They're evil, fucking vindictive little shits. Um, except for Bandit, he's just passed out. He's being a good boy. Um, he'll get evil cats, which is like 99% of cats. Uh, the, the part that pisses me off about Unity is that you have this whole buildup that you're trying to find this thing for like the future timeline or whatever, and then you get to the end of the game, you're, like, you're trying to find this object, and then, and then it just turns to like, oh, I guess it's lost in the catacombs, or cat cat catacombs. Like, oh well, nothing we can do about it. And so you're just like, we did all this for nothing. The entire plot of this game was in was fucking pointless, and I'm just like, uh, yeah. And it's like, I just don't think my favorite use of the future stuff was Assassin's Creed Four, where you played as like an Abstergo employee testing a game. That was cool. I I loved the meta shit that was going and there on. There was like first person sections where you were in the future and you could like sneak around your office and like steal your boss's like emails and stuff. That shit was cool. I love that. I love when Assassin's Creed is meta like that. Do I like when they're meta where they implied that Desmond started COVID? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's just weird. That's too meta. Uh, also, has Desmond been dead for like a decade up to that point? I I will not comment. Oh, don't bring Desmond back. Let let him rust. Um, but I mean, Syndicate's fun. Uh, Ubisoft is still a shit company, though. I will say that Ubisoft's a shit company. Uh, I support the employees that have come up against them. Um, but Syndicate is still my favorite uh, Assassin's Creed game. It is very good. It plays very well. Uh, I don't know why the fuck they haven't given it a 60 FPS boost yet. Uh, it's baffling to me because it still looks very good running on a Series X because that's what I'm playing it on. Um, like The draw distance is really nuts and stuff looks really smoother like uh, texture-wise and cutscenes look very good. You know, I forgot, you have the, uh, I, I forget what they call it, the, the grappling hook, where you just jump yes. to the top of the building. Oh, that makes sweet. life so much easier. Oh, excuse me. That literally makes life so much easier. Like, hey, I, I will say... Oh, with oh sorry, it. go ahead. No, I've just done a couple missions with it, and oh my god, it makes life easier. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, like, one one thing I actually really like about the uh, RPG Assassin's Creed, uh, or um, I guess it kind of gets rid of the puzzle elements of it, but you can just go up to any wall. You don't have to look to like you don't have to look for specific like um, uh, hand hand holes, whatever to grab. You just fucking if you want to climb a cliff, fuck it, go for it. it just lets you do it. Um, but so I, I like that syndicate was just like let, let's get around a little bit of, of that tedium. Let's just fucking yeet yourself on up. It's fucking what? beautiful. You're in the eighteenth. 18- century so you have so much more inventions to work with than like oh i'm just gonna whirl this like thing around and throw it like no you have a literal grappling hook because these things were created in the 1800s like mm. so it's like they I, that's why i think the industrial revolution was such a fun uh area to work with because of all the ex- all the gadgets and all the upgrades you, you, you can get that fit with the era mm-hmm that's why I think it's so much fun and why it fits really good. But yeah, I just miss Assassin's Creed being Assassin's Creed. <laughs> like, I just miss it being like what Syndicate is. When Assassin's Creed is good, it's pretty fucking good. It is. Oh my god, it is. Like, I miss this. And that sounds crazy, but like, I want Assassin's Creed to go back to normal Assassin's Creed, please. Because... For ref- oh, I was no. going to say for reference, um, wait, wait, so you're playing Syndicate now on Xbox. Did you Do you know how much that goes for? Nowadays, like what, like twenty bucks? I want to say. I don't know. I got it on sale for two dollars and eighty nine cents. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, yeah there you go. Personally, bought it. Is it because nice. it was so cheap? <clears throat> um, um, it runs I, pretty nice on PC too. Um, I'm, I'm just looking at the specs here. Um, at least what they've listed on Steam. You know, Ubisoft is always kind of weird about their PC spec requirements, where they're kind of like overinflated. Um. 
But yeah, it's a game from what, 20... 2015 or 2016? I will say, I, I know it came out when I was in junior college, because when it came out, I played for eight hours straight. I, I, I'm pretty sure 2015. But um, at minimum, you need a GTX 660. That's a very old card. And then for recommended would be a 760. Um, that is also a very old card. So, hey, if you want to play it at 60 and above, it's available pretty easily on uh, on PC. Otherwise, yes, I guess PS4, Xbox, it's available. I mean, I will say this game almost made me fail junior college because when it came out, all I played was that game. I played for like 13 hours once to the point where my roommate <laughs> please go eat, please take a shower, and please do your homework. And I was like, what time is it? And they're like, it is 3 p.m. And I'm like, I started at 7. <laughs> I, I know I've been blabbing about it a lot recently just because I don't want to take full credit, but I will take some credit for the wave of new, for the wave I'm sorry, the new wave of people playing Danganronpa, but dude, when Danganronpa V3 came out in 2017, uh, there was like t two nights I just did not sleep, because I'm just like, oh no, I gotta get to the plot detail, I gotta beat the trial, and just keep going and going, I'm just like, I, I think that's a pretty, I, I think you'll agree with this, it is a pretty damn good sign if you're willing to sacrifice sleep for a game. Oh yeah. It, it is a good sign that it is a good fucking game. Like when Syndicate came out, uh, I was in college up in I was in junior college up in Michigan, and this was back when games released at midnight everywhere. Not how since we're here, games release at nine. Um, and I said I would only play the first hour. The first hour turned to me being up till three thirty in the morning. Oh shit! Because <laughs> I just sat there and I just played it because I was addicted. I love the setting. I loved Jacob and Evie. Like I was just addicted, and I still am. Like that game's very good. And I will most likely be buying the DLC again because I did because I did the Jack the Ripper DLC. I did all that stuff. Like I did everything. So I will be doing it again because I just missed that game and I miss that game's universe. And again, they could have done something cool with Watch Dogs Legion and connected the two, but I'm kind of sad that they didn't. Um, uh, I, hope, I, mean, I I hope it gets that uh, FPS boost soon. That'd, that'd be that would cool. be really cool. I'd love to see that game running at like a crisp sixty. I think it only runs at thirty. But it looks good though. The Series mm -hmm. X has its uh, has its just normal boost that it does, and it looks very good. Um, I mean, other than that, I'll quickly say I played uh, Quake for the first time because it's on Game Pass. I've never played Quake. Oh, you know, just uh, just real quick, I I don't remember if this was Unity or Syndicate. Um, mm -hmm. If you're playing the PS4 version on PS5, it runs like shit. I do not recall which. I'd have to look it up. Most likely Unity. <laughs> Might be Unity. I would say but, most likely Unity. But, that uh, but, uh, but yeah, j just a warning for people. Um, anyway, you, you wanted to talk about Quake. Yeah, I'll talk about it really quickly because I only got like... Though that was a game where I said I would only play one level and end up playing like seven. <laughs> <laughs> because I never played Quake before. And I gave it a shot. And whoever's smart idea... And I'm not being sarcastic here. Like whoever's smart idea it was to put jumping on the left trigger and firing on the right is the smartest human being alive. Because <laughs> I'm not good at fast games, but having the jump button be very easy and like accessible to me totally made my life easier. I, I am so happy for that because... Um, like I, I was kind of poking fun at someone like on the Steam forums. They're saying, like, how do you aim down sights? And I'm just like, bro. Because, you know, it, it's it's an old PC shooter. Old PC shooters didn't have aim down sights. It's just, it's just running and shooting and jumping all at the same time. So I, I think it's super awesome that just by default on controllers, they are putting a uh, jump on left trigger because you don't need to aim down sights. And that's that's such a core, core gameplay loop where you do where you don't want to have to move your thumb over to a just, it's just like even real quick. So it, it sounds it sounds fucking awesome to play on console. Also, shotguns have an insane distance. Like, I oh, yes, take somebody out from the other end of a room. It's, it's like beautiful shotgun. And the first time I did it, I was just like, okay. Like, I was just like, that's fine. <laughs> um, and I mean, it's cool. Uh, Night Dive Supremacy, because that company fucking rules. Having secretly worked on the Quake remaster, like just putting it out in a single day. Being like, surprise, well, we've been working on System Shock 2 and the System Shock remake. We dropped a Quake remaster on literally the same day that we announced it. 
it's like, all on uh, Game Pass too, right? Yeah, yeah, all the quakes are on Game Pass, and the remaster of the first game, which is done by N- Night Dive, it's not done by B- Bethesda. It's done by Night Dive with Bethesda being like, um, or Id being like uh, consultants on it. Um, it fucking rules. Like that game Wait, is. Is it all four? Because if I remember correctly, isn't Quake Three online? Om- like, it's, like it's multiplayer only, right? It's not just. I know there's not just one Quake on there. There's the remake of the first game, or or the remaster, and I saw there was maybe Quake Two on there too. Um, I can boot up my Xbox really quick and check. Um, we'll we'll like, leave it into the ether. Like, <laughs> but I never thought I would dig this game. But I don't know. Maybe it's because Night Dive did it, and I'm a sucker for that company. Um, but like, they did a killer job. That game looks fantastic, especially running on like a Series X. Like that game looks fucking fantastic it and then apparently on switch it, it, it looks fantastic too like whoever in that company sold their soul to have a fantastic group of people like good on you man like night dive is saving gaming um what's the term night dive is saving the ability to um to uh i can't think of the term um preserving yeah they're 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 literally on the forefront of preserving old school preservation i think literally remastering them in a way where they look beautiful compared to when they came 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 out like it's they're doing literal god's work in preservation and it's crazy like just I can't get over the fact that this that we literally found out about this quake remaster on the first day of QuakeCon, and then it released the same day. Like, they're like, oh, we've been working on this for, like, a year now, in complete silence, and we just dropped it today, and it's one of the best remasters I've ever played, and I've never played the original. But they have found a way to, like, modernize an old PC shooter from, like, the early 90s into something playable and incredibly fun on fucking the $600 next-gen consoles. And I'm just having a blast. Like, again, I told myself I would only play one or two levels, and I did, like, seven nice does have some weird 90s jank though like where it's like oh this key on the wall is blue but it says i need a yellow key on the door it's it's like it's like oh do these crates have the nine inch nails logo on them yes (laughs) only to find out that nine inch nails did the soundtrack for quake i'm like all right that makes sense like there like there's been some weird jank i've ran into like shots going through and and enemies or like an enemy i think only takes one shot will take like 20 oh wow and there's been some jank where I've um, where I'm thinking I'm running fast enough to get away and put space between me and something else, but in the time where I turn around to hit something else, it's already right behind me. Like there's been some times like like that where I've gotten like or I've gotten like I, like the I think they're called shamblers, like the big dudes that like, jump at you like uh, head crab style, but they're like big. Um, those enemies annoy the shit out of me because they take so many bullets and they always appear out of nowhere like you'll literally be turning a corner and one's right in your face so it like traps you in that corner because you can't get out and it takes so much health um and the fact that there's no difficulty option is kind of weird to me but again it's 90s jank so maybe night dive just couldn't edit one in mm-hmm. um but it's cool preserve i'm all for preservation and i'm all for preserving really old 90s pc games that really rule and i think night dive didn't excellent job with this re- remaster because it's gotten me interested i mean hell i as soon as i heard about it and i heard that night dive was doing it i instantly downloaded it and i played it i played it for like enough i had an absolute blast so quake is cool apparently it's playable all in co-op might get my co-op buddy on it with me because he said oh you know all the, all the all the quakes are playable in co-op so i might i might attempt that um but yeah it's fun Nice. I, I I feel like I know a lot about Quake just because I know a lot about id. Um, it, I I would highly recommend the book uh, Masters of Doom. It came out freaking forever ago. It's basically the entire foundation of id, the uh, people that made it, um, the game, how they went about making Wolfenstein, making Doom, making Quake. Very fucking interesting book. It's not even, it's not that long. It's an easy read. Um, highly recommend. But I think I even own like all the Quake games on Steam. I've just never really gotten around to playing them. I, th- I think I've played like maybe thirty minutes of, of Quake One. Well, but I'm, I'm interested to check in the. I'm interested to check out the remaster if it's like a complete like. I don't, 
Maybe not complete overhaul, but I'll still check it out either way. It's from what I've heard, it's not an overhaul, but it's a very well done remaster. Because I don't know, a lot of the night dive artists have been posting the uh, the before and after pixel art of the original game and the remastering that they did. The, it, the, it's some solid work, dude. Like Would they you... cleaned up shit. Like they woof, cleaned it all all up. Would you say that Quake distinctly feels like a PC shooter? Like, are you having a good time using a controller, or does it feel like one of those games where you should be playing with a mouse? Well, the one thing that I also think Night Dive does really well is they add uh, they add controller support to a lot of the remasters that that they do because they know that people like to play these games with controllers if they can, which is why I'm very interested in the System Shock Two remaster whenever that decides to drop into my lap. Um, but like, yeah, I felt great playing it with a with a controller. Kind of reminds me of how they ported like Doom and Doom sixty four and stuff over. I felt fine totally playing it. I actually had a fun time playing it with the controller, nice. especially with how they put the put the like buttons and stuff. It like it definitely. Um, and I were pretty sure Night Dive did that on purpose because they maybe tested it out which which with which button works like tan tan tangential with uh firing and like jumping and stuff mm -hmm. um because yeah like I, seriously i'm kind of sad i never played the original because i would have wanted to like play the original and then play this and like see the see the difference but i could just tell playing it on like an hd tv like an hk hd 4k 120 hertz tv it runs like a dream for being from like 1992 <laughs> does it have uh 120 support i don't know uh if i had to think about it probably not because a lot of what Night Dive does with their remasters of stuff is they tend to keep the original experience. They just make it better. Like, so I think it's running at 60 on the Series X if I have to guess. Um, and obviously the like the like pixel art is cleaned up. It looks super smooth, though it still kind of again has that 90s jank to it. Um, because it's obviously pixel art and skeletons and samurai people. So it's got that weird little 90s jank to it. But, like, I feel like they keep the good jank and they fix the bad jank. Or they fix what they can. Or they just add in if the jank allows them to add. So it's like, it's if you played the original Quake and you haven't played this yet, I don't know what's wrong with you. Because it's very, very good. It's, it's nice, lay back, and just place, play like a level or two to me. Because the levels seem pretty quick. Um, and also, I forgot to mention, this has all the DLC in it. So, like, oh, those nice. expansions that they came out with, that's all in there. You can nice. pick it and, like... So, when you click uh, when you click Start and you click, like, New n new Game, it lets you pick from the base game and all its chapters to the expansion and all its chapters. So, like, you can pick where you want to start at. So, so, they, so, they didn't just do Quake. They did all the expansions for Quake. In there too. Nice. So overall, pr pretty solid time. Highly recommended. Interesting. It's cool to finally play a piece of history. Since I never played it, it's incredibly cool to because I saw that uh, the recent Sh Shadow Man remaster and the fact that they're bringing S System Shock Two finally able so that people can play it and not hate the jank that because that jank's pretty bad jank. Uh, I like I said, night dives doing fucking work. Night dives supremacy, uh, man. Like nice. night dives basically saving PC gaming and saving its his history, and I think that's incredibly important. And this company rocks. Awesome. Plus, it's on Game Pass. So. Yeah, yeah. If you have Game Pass, <laughs> might as well. Pass, so I did not have to pay a dime to uh, play it. I will, I will say, I, I've been just going through a whole bunch of Game Pass games, just like giving them, I'll give them like an hour or two, just to like feel it out, give them, a, give them a fair shake. And even if I don't necessarily stick with something, it's it it's a great way to check things out. I, I can't highly, um, fuck, fuck that. I highly recommend Game Pass, is what I want to say. It's, 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 oh, yeah. it's, it's nice to be able to try things out, even if you don't intend on sticking with them. Like, let's just be honest here, I most likely wouldn't have played Quake Day 1 if I'd pay for it. And that's not a, that's, that's not like a, what's the term? 
that's not like me being like, oh, I don't think I'm going to like this. That's just more, I always thought Quake was never my thing. So I would have probably waited till it went on sale. Mm-hmm. Um, but the fact that I can actually like play it and not have to pay and be like, okay, will I like this? Yes or no? Is incredibly like, I love it. It's, it's incredibly interesting. I'm happy to play a piece of history finally. And Night Guy Rule. Nice. See, I wish my my heart desires. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe before I do that, like, I I will do a small piece on it. I don't feel like going on about it like super duper freaking long or whatever. Um, I want to talk Persona Five Strikers. Hey, that game was fun. I went. Sorry, my cat is continuing to be an asshole. In and out, in and out, as a cat wishes a cat gets. Otherwise, it makes a big old mess. Um, yeah, Persona 5 Strikers. It is a sequel to Persona 5. Uh, somehow not a sequel to Persona 5 Royal. So um, characters exclusive to Royal are ignored because they don't exist in there, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but it is what it is. It is a uh, Muso take on Persona 5. So Persona 5 is a turn-based JRPG. Uh, this is an action RPG where there's a bunch of dudes on screen and you wipe them out quite easily. It has a lot of um, has a lot of the flair and furnishing of Persona 5 where you are using skills, you are fusing Personas. Um, so, th- so they had a lot of aspects from Persona proper into a Musa game. It's so like pre- presentation wise, it's there. I think it slightly suffers from it is a good imitation of the presentation of the first game, but you can tell that it's ever so slightly off. So it always kind of feels, uh, uncanny, uncanny Valley is not the word, but you can tell that it's slightly off. Sorry. got the hiccups. Um, yeah, I, I, I gave it like a good five, six hours. I, I loved hanging out with them. Gosh, dang kids again. Cause I love them. Gosh, dang kids. Um, I love the story. Um, just, just, just that gameplay personally is not up my alley. And so I, I, I just couldn't see myself playing it for 30 hours. Oh, maybe I'll, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe I'll give it another try. Cause I would like to see that story through, or maybe I'll watch a, um, I'll, I'll watch like a cutscene compilation on YouTube. If, if Atlas isn't up to their usual shenanigans. Um, yeah. Uh, if, if you like action games of that variety, you like Persona? It seems like a match made in heaven. It seems like Sarah enjoyed it much more than I did. I did. Um, it was very fun. Um, but yeah, I, I, I went into it knowing I don't like Musas. I, I gave it a fair shot, and uh, I've come to the conclusion I still do not uh, personally care for Muso games, but that's just me. See, the funny difference is I don't like Musos either, and I loved Persona 5 Strikers. I think it was because, like, it was more Persona 5 than it was, like, um, Muso to me. So I was able to, like, uh, power through the, like, Muso elements. Mm-hmm. Which is just how I was able to, like, get and, like, enjoy myself. Also, I just missed being with those characters. Yeah. So being with them again felt really good. And also it has one of my favorite Personas ever, but you didn't say it because you only got six hours in. <laughs> yeah. It'd be what it'd be. One of my favorite um, persona and favorite like scenes of someone getting their persona. <laughs> like you literally, you're missing it, man. It's so good. I, I will say as a general statement, um, wh- whenever I personally do not enjoy a game, I, I, I will never, I f- it feels weird to even say, cause it feels like a very like weird sociopathic thing to do. It's like, Hey, if someone enjoys something I don't like, I am I am very happy for them. Like, hey, I, I don't want people to not like something because I don't like something. And then, you know, just vice versa. Um yeah. Very glad Sarah had a good time with it. Yeah, I mean, that's... I know it's not for everybody. Musos again, I'm not a Muso person. So But I still enjoyed it because it's Persona 5 and the bosses were really fun. And the ending boss was a bitch, and I almost got fucked over because the ending boss did <laughs> the JRPG thing that I was like, I didn't see this coming, but I should have. But it was, yeah, it was still, it was still a lot of fun. I, I will, I would probably have stuck with it if it was, 
man, I feel like it's lame of me to say it because, you know, they put a lot of work into it, but I would literally love it if they just did that exact same story, but just had it play as a JRPG. But, um, yeah. That's about all I have to say in Persona 5 Strikers. You, you played a lot more of it. Do you have anything else you wanted to add? I like to think it's... It's not my favorite Persona game, but it's very good and it's a lot of fun. And it's... Uh, it's yeah, I mean, honestly, it's just fun. As someone who likes uh, real-time combat in JRPGs more than turn-based, I had no issue with it, but I get why other people did. And I, and I also never played Royal, so like uh, this was totally fine by fine by me. So nice. Um, let's see the the real meat and bones game that I wish to talk about. Uh, this game came out I, I guess in 2017. Uh, you know, 2017 being the fucking all time great year that it is apparently. <laughs> um, fucking Corey got me addicted to Dead by Daylight. Uh, Dead by Daylight is an asymmetric multiplayer game. Uh, four people play as survivors. One person plays as a slasher killer. And um, they, <laughs> they have uh, original killers. They have tie-ins. They have Ghostface. <laughs> they have uh, Amanda from Saw. They have Leatherface. They got Michael Myers. <laughs> um, th- they got a lot of tie-ins. They got Pyramid Head. They got the Demogorgon from Stranger Things, which, hey, uh, that... They have to take down the Stranger Things, uh, the ability to purchase those characters and the Demogorgon starting, I think, like September 9th. So if you want it, it's half off. Go ahead and grab it while you can. Um, yeah, it is just a fun, asymmetric game. Like whether you're playing as, as survivors, you know, like your entire goal is to like run around uh, the area and find generators. Once you get the generators, you can escape. You can use a hatch. There's a big old leveling system in order to get um, items like med kits, uh, toolboxes, flashlights, maps, keys. Um, so there's like a constant, there's like a constant sense of progression because you're getting new stuff like on a super frequent basis. <laughs> um, there's a lot of playable characters all with their own unique like perks and strengths and weaknesses. And yeah, it's just a fun time to play with friends. It's, uh, you can be fixing something with your buddy, Corey. All of a sudden, killer shows up behind you. You're running and screaming for your life. One of you decides to take one for the team and get hit. It's, it's, it's just genuinely a great time. And I don't feel like there's much on the market. Like, like whenever I generally, uh, generally hit up friends, it's like, oh, what does everyone feel like playing? It's usually like, Fall Guys, it's, uh, Rainbow Six, it's, uh, Halo, Call of Duty, freaking whatever. But I, I, I don't feel like there's anything quite like, uh, Dead by Daylight. I guess you could say there's like Phasmophobia, but that, it's not that kind of like horror co-op game. It, it's very active. You, there's, you can do stealth stuff. It, it, it's fun. And then just on top of that, of that, um, surviving with friends is, uh, you can be the killer. You can be hunting down these four fools. And, uh, it's a great time. All the killers have like super, they all have, um, they all have a unique ability, and some of them are like wackier than others. Some can it's like basic stuff, like oh, you can put down bear traps, or um, you can throw axes, which you know the axe throwing one's actually pretty good. There's some that can teleport. There's some that can that can raise freaking barbed wire and stuff and trap people. It's it's just such a good time. Oh, oh Nemesis is in there. They added uh, Resident Evil uh, DLC. Which is actually pretty cool because the uh, map they added for that is the um, RCPD, the Raccoon City Police Department. And it's amazing how much of your knowledge from the Resident Evil 2 remake version of that map translates one to one in Dead by Daylight. Like they make some changes and stuff, but it's just like, oh, I know where the uh, the safe room is. I know where to go from here. It's uh, it's just a good time. Um, yeah, I, I can't sing its praises high enough. I, I've owned it since 2017, but never really got into it too much. And then Corey's like, hey, here's a game we can play. And I played it, and I played it when Corey got uh, got offline. I just kept playing it, just like, this is fucking addicting. It's it's good. I, I would highly recommend trying it. Um, yeah, it's, it's just fucking fun. If you like slashers, if you like hiding with friends, if, if you need like a multiplayer game that isn't just like the typical... Uh, stuff that's already out there. This I would say it's pretty unique. Uh, yeah, it's a good time. Uh, really hate to change the subject, but the Far From Home teaser trailer dropped. 
Far From Home. Oh, the Spider-Man? Yeah. Oh, shit. Okay. Dropped on a, on a Twitter. So it's probably the one that, you know, that was uh, leaked on three different phones. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, sorry. Just wanted, to, just wanted to throw that out there. I will watch that, like, literally as soon as... You that know, we're, literally just dropped. You know what? We're, we're pretty close to ending the show. We're at one. You're like, all right, all right. Yep, yep. Shows us. <laughs> Spider-Man's out. We done. <laughs> oh, oh okay. shit. How do you feel about Spider-Man? Oh, he's kind of boring, I guess, but I, I watched his movies. I, I, his, I, ride, his, his ride was pretty uh, cool. I, I, I was I was gonna ask like oh uh, do you have any questions said by Dale but you know what I I want I want to go watch that trailer right now we're, that's we're, right yeah uh, I don't thanks. get by daylight that's not my style of game I'm glad you like it though it's it's addicting it's it's fun uh, with that out of the way thanks everyone for watching uh, we'll be back next Monday 5 p.m. PST uh, bye bye goodbye.